First and foremost is the article that I read by a journalist by the name of Roxane Gay. And she wrote an article about The Whale, the movie which recently garnered Brendan Fraser a Best Actor Oscar for his portrayal of a man who's close to 600 pounds at a very, very kind of turbulent point in his life. And you get to see through this, what is supposed to be just an, an, an enormous achievement of a performance from Mr. Brandon Frazier, um, you get to see this man struggle, you get to see the pain, and you get to see him deal with uh, extreme adversity that comes with not only his weight, but also some of the other things surrounding that, uh, his situation with his children, and blah, 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 blah. Either way, I'm sure most of you are at least familiar that this movie exists, The Whale, right? This lady, Roxanne Gay, um, she was very upset about this movie and this idea of thinner actors putting on a fat suit to portray an overweight person. Um, she was frankly upset, and I'm judging solely by the words that she wrote this isn't i'm not this isn't um speculation that she's upset that hollywood by and large is mostly thin people to begin with and the more and more i read about this article because i'm very interested in this idea of fat or you know body tolerance body acceptance because i'm not someone who's ever been particularly overweight but i am someone who's dealt with really debilitating body image issues, um, which I think lead to a lot of people who have problems with food, you know, and I've certainly had extremely difficult problems with food. My relationship with food has oftentimes been incredibly toxic and not very uh, functional. It's rather dysfunctional, to be honest. That being said, I don't ever want to make it seem like I understand what it's like to be someone who's like, alarmingly overweight because I think that that comes with it a social stigma and, and ridicule and rejection that I don't know. I don't know. But this lady Roxane Gay was very upset about the idea of saying that, you know, the, the, the theater where the Oscars were held was filled with a bunch of people who are probably taking Ozambic and engaging in a bunch of fad diets in order to look thin, not necessarily for health. And immediately I was struck by the fact that this is not necessarily very good journalism. Granted, this was an editorial. This was right from the start. No one was um, had the wool pulled over their eyes that this was some type of objective article. This was her opinion, right? But I thought, well, that's an awfully terrible thing to say when you probably don't know anybody in that room. Uh, it's an assumption to, su to assume that Yes, because they're thin, most by and large, that they're doing it for all the wrong reasons. I, I, you can't say that. It's just like me to say if there was a group of people who were overweight in one theater, for me to just make these glaring assumptions that they are that way for different reasons. And I, you don't know. You don't know. One thing I've learned that is probably beyond a shadow of a doubt, that is not really open for debate by any reasonable person, is that we don't really know anything. When it comes to the human experience, there are so many factors, so many un incalculable factors that go into someone's experience. We can't sit there and say like, oh, I know exactly why that's happening. I know why they're getting a divorce. You don't know. I don't know. I don't know why they're getting a divorce, which is so why I have really moved so far away from this idea of being a political pundit or current event type pundit, which I was starting to find a lot of success doing in AM talk radio and then on the cable news stations, because I started to realize like I'm, I, I, I'm being forced to make non-nuanced claims about things that I really don't have much knowledge of. Anyway, I, 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 I'm a passionate follower of politics and I'm deeply invested with deep passion with the idea of the, the American system and then how it applies on a global scale. I love it. I love America. I love American history. I love contemporary American history. I'm geeky about it. You know, I can I can whoop that ass in some some jeopardy when we're talking about, you know, 20th century American history. <clears throat> Pardon me. But I had to steer away from it because I started to make that realization 
that I, I, I would have to take on this persona of a pundit as opposed to trying to have a nuanced conversation because even though a nuanced conversation by, by my estimation was a lot more congruent with how most people are living their lives and how reality really is, it doesn't really drive ratings and it doesn't get people's interests. And if I want to be a pundit, maybe I can get to punditry when it comes to health and nutrition and fitness and training and stuff, because at least there I can stand behind some things that I'm pretty positive are true and I can really dig my heels in. So this lady, Roxane Gay, is already pointing fingers at everyone in the room for being thin. And she says it gives off a false impression of reality when the average woman in America is size 14 to 16. I'm like, well, what does that fucking matter? Who cares? Are, are you trying to drop a bombshell that Hollywood is not representative of the average bloke? No shit. When I go to the Laker game, am I under some impression that the starting five of both teams is going to have some fucking semblance of how normal men look? No, those are God-gifted athletic freaks who are mostly close to seven feet tall because they're the best of the best at playing basketball. It's the same thing that I got, and this is not a political statement, this is just my, per, uh, my personal feelings on things. Um, because I watched the Nolan Ryan documentary last night, which is excellent, by the way, even if you're not a fan of baseball. Um, and George W. Bush, who was at the time that Nolan Ryan was playing for the Rangers, the owner of the Rangers, President George W. Bush. And I got to thinking like, wow, if he was never president, he really does seem like a really decent guy that is very likable. And I think he got put into a position where he had to do and say things that are pretty unsavory. Um, but <sighs> getting back to my point, I, I had a real real hard time during his administration because there was this narrative, especially coming from powerful Republicans, that there's like, I'm just like you. Sarah Palin would say, you know, I'm just like you. I'm just a hockey mom. I'm not a, I'm, I'm not some highfalutin. And George W. Bush, would, would, even though he went to Yale, was pushing that same narrative. You know, well, I'm just a regular dude. I just like to drink beer and go to Yale, even though yeah, I think he's an alcoholic. I apologize. I just like to, to, you know, work on my pickup truck and do the, and I got to think, I'm like, what, wait, 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 let's pause. Okay. Christine O'Donnell, I think was the name of this other woman who was running during that time. And she said, you know, I, I'm just like, I'm just an average woman. I'm just your average. And I said, wait a second, you're trying to run the country. I don't want average. I don't want the average person. I want someone who is far above average, above average intellect, above average uh, ambition, above average work ethic. That's the people that I want running the country. And when it comes to Hollywood, I don't want average. I want extremely charismatic, oftentimes beautiful by traditional standards. But if you're not beautiful, I want you to have an interesting character-filled look. I don't want you to be the average guy or gal that you look at and you go, well, I feel like I've seen that guy a million times or that dude a million. You know, it looks just, just like my friends when I head on down to the bar. That's not the point. It's entertainment. And we like to look at just like I am a pretty darn good. I'm, a, I'm an above average guitar player. But when I listen to metal, or classical music, I don't want guitar players kind of close to me and my abilities. I want exceptional. I want to go, wow, this takes me to another place. It's, it's amazing what this artist is capable of achieving. And she further down in the article starts to say, putting on a fat suit is not the same thing as a shared experience of someone who's had to live their life overweight and it's insulting, it's fat phobic to have a thinner actor portraying an overweight person. And I thought, well, no, 
At the beginning of my statement, I made it very clear. I don't know the, the hardships of someone who is uh, aggressively overweight. I don't. But I know what it's like to be a drug addict and an alcoholic and never once have I seen someone on film or on television portray it excellently and thought to myself, great job, great job, Nick Cage, Ryan Gosling, off the top of my head, uh, Joaquin Phoenix. But because I know, I know you're not really an alcoholic, you don't get it. Therefore, you shouldn't be able to portray this character. Only Anthony Hopkins and uh, Ian McShane, a couple other people who are like openly in recovery, only they can can do this because they they understand this experience. No, that's what acting is. It's pretend. And you take emotions and feelings deep inside you and you're able to apply them to this character to bring it more and more to life. And it's preposterous. And it's such aggressive victim mentality to say like, well, since you don't, you didn't experience this in real life, you should, it precludes you from doing it on screen. It's insane. An athlete in any sport who had to work really hard just to be able to get to the point where they can make money doing their love, their, the sport that they love. They're, they're, they're not granted the ability to say, you who's just so gifted, you never really had to work as hard as me. You don't know what it was like to be cut from a team because you're so incredibly naturally talented. Your leaping ability, your speed, your fast switch muscle is so much far superior to me, the guy who, or the gal who had to grind it out. You don't get it. So therefore this isn't for you. No, it's for whoever can do it the best. And to say that Brandon Frazier shouldn't be able to do his Oscar-winning performance because he is not someone who has been 600 pounds takes away the amazing experience of other people who are maybe potentially overweight who look and watch that movie and go maybe he didn't maybe he's never experienced this in particular but man he gets it because it elicits an emotion inside of me that wants to bring tears to my eyes and I go good amazing I watched half Nelson a hundred times Ryan Gosling film I'm gonna say 2007 ish somewhere it's 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 been a while. Anthony Mackie, Ryan Gosling, and uh, Omar Epps' um, young, uh, younger sister, ex exceptional performances all around. And Ryan Gosling plays a crack-addicted uh, grade school teacher, <coughs> junior high school teacher, I apologize. And he's crack-addicted. And there are times when his portrayal is so spot-on as someone who smoked lots of crack that it is, it, it, it's transformative for me. I can't just watch this movie like I would watch a comedy or a romantic comedy and go, this is fun, this is it. I, I, I become really moved by it. All the while I know Ryan Gosling, I'm gonna bet you dollars to donuts, has never actually smoked crack. There's not one piece of me that goes, well, shit, this movie is malarkey. Because me, as a drug addict, I know he doesn't know what it's really like. Therefore, this performance is, is, is moot. That would be crazy, wouldn't it? You know who's experienced in just an unbelievable amount of pain and suffering? Sex workers. Yeah, sex workers, especially female ones. It's just probably a, a, a living nightmare. And I'm so sympathetic to their struggle. My wife, who's an actor, has been a sex worker like 10 times on screen. It's kind of concerning. I wonder like, well, how much scrimmaging had to go on for her to be this good come game day? But either way, my wife has played in comedies and in more serious roles, she has played stripper slash prostitute slash sex worker in, in many forms. And uh, 
I don't think she had to go walk the streets or become an escort or an exotic dancer to understand that this is probably a painful life. Do you get what I'm saying? You are digging that victim hole so deep in an attempt to get people to have sympathy, to be empathic to you and your suffering. And what you're doing now is just creating this bubble over you where it starts to detach people from having that ability to connect with you because it sounds just so immature and so spineless. And then later on down in the article, she says, and I haven't seen this movie, nor will I. And I, <laughs> you're writing an article critiquing and pooping on this man's performance and this film, but you haven't seen it. What? Where are we living now? What reality is this? In what world do we tolerate someone critiquing artwork when they haven't seen it? Because I can tell you, not that long ago, if someone wrote an article and was just providing scathing critique about something, anything, and then he or she said, and by the way, haven't seen it, don't really know it, but this is how I feel. I f it would be like Salem, which they might burn that person. So I'm not trying to make a a a a, a this this really in-depth takedown of Roxanne Gay. I'm sure she's very talented. Now, this is not what I'm trying to say, but it is representative of something that's going on an awful lot nowadays, where people can just ap apply feelings which we can all probably agree are pretty misguided sometimes. You have reactionary kind of effects that go on. When something happens because of the way your life has gone, something will happen and then your left brain kind of shuts off and you have this internal animal reaction to it. And that, by the way, is super valid for you. But that is not the basis of providing critique, opinion, or ideas. And it shouldn't be taken as valid. I feel like fill in the blank band. There's a couple, there's a couple dozen are horrible. So Okay, I won't listen to them, but I'm certainly not going to go and write about it and tell other people how, how insensitive it is for them to make this music that is kind of offensive to me. And artwork should always be looked at through the same prism. I, uh, since I've moved here to Texas, I, uh, uh, my friend network is almost, is very largely made up of veterans and active duty military. And some of their stories are breathtaking. The bravery, the courage, the, the, the fear that they had to deal with, and then also just the trauma and, and, and how nightmarish it can be for these men and women. Uh, does that make Saving Private Ryan or Platoon just invalid because most of the people in that movie had not served in the military, especially not overseas and in war.
If we're going to make any type of war movie right now, if we're going to make any type of movie portraying a, a, a United States military officer, is Adam Driver supposed to, is he the only guy that can do it? I'll bet you one thing, Adam Driver himself probably wouldn't agree to that because he looks like, no, no. I mean, yes, thank you for appreciating my service. And by the way, Adam Driver, you're a great guy and uh, an immensely talented actor. And thank you so much for your service. But he's a professional actor and a good one at that. And he probably realizes like, oh, guys who have uh, dealt with adversity probably can understand what it might be like to me. And maybe if they want to talk to me, they can get some idea of someone who's actually been in those shoes and then apply it to creating this character and giving it realism. Uh, I don't know if you know this, Christian Bale, not a pompous billionaire who fights crime at night in a bat suit. He's not really that, I don't know if you know this, not real. That's not who he is. He's a dude. Also, Christian Bale, not a, uh, not a Wall Street guy in 1987 who's so superficial that he doesn't have any feelings and any kind of visceral connection to other human beings, so he goes around killing them. That, it's not, that's not who Christian Bale really is. Cut this shit out, man. Cut this shit out. 